The produce aisle at the market today had the most overwhelming smell of basil, which is actually a little odd for this time of year, but it smelled so good I had to pick some up. So we're gonna go ahead and make a basil walnut pate. Just keep that in the fridge. It'll make easy, quick sandwiches, top it on a salad so that it has a little more staying power and some fats and nutrients and, and protein in there. So we're gonna um, make this. This is a great pate, any nut pate really. It's a great one to just make and have around. So a couple things we need. Our basil is going to turn brown almost immediately unless we coat it with some lemon. So we're gonna make sure that when we throw this in the food processor, we do so with some lemon right there. That will keep our basil um, from looking horrible when it's in the nut pate. It'll still have a nice, beautiful green look to it. We're gonna punch that green color up a notch by adding spinach also. Get a little extra iron in the dish by adding the uh, spinach as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and have my lemon juice ready to go. I'm gonna put the garlic in first. I have four cloves of garlic here. If you don't like garlic, you'll wanna cut that back. I have one cup of, of walnuts. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. I had two cups of walnuts that I soaked last night, and with one cup of walnuts, I made something akin to a chicken salad or something. You know, I just threw in the other cup of wal walnuts that I had soaked with a stock of celery and a carrot stick and a lot of fresh dill and gosh, some lemon and a little bit of mineral salt and whipped it up and there you go, you have another flavored pate on hand. So I generally soak two cups of nuts at a time and then I split it and I make a couple of pates. Saves me a lot of time, energy, chopping, cleaning, you know. Now, I'm going to add to this two cups of basil. But since our garlic cloves are whole, not minced, let's just go ahead and give this a little bit. There we go. Because the garlic takes much longer, obviously, to mash up than any of the, the basil will. So we want a cup or two of basil, and we want, I'm gonna leave a couple leaves for my garnish. Um, and then we'll also want a cup, at least, of fresh spinach. Now the spinach, is not gonna affect the flavor much. So if you are trying to sneak spinach in for little ones, maybe you have kids who don't eat it, but you know it is oh so good for them. And it is oh so good for them. It's one of the best and easiest vegetables, I think, to get kids to eat. Go ahead and add it with as much spinach as you like. Now, if you overwhelm the um, spinach, you put more spinach in than basil, you're gonna start tasting it. I personally like the taste, so that wouldn't bother me. But if you're trying to hide it with kids, you don't wanna do that. I'm gonna pulse it again. It's not gonna like that. All right. Okay. Nice and fluffy leaves at the top are not getting down in there, so I'm just gonna mash this in here. Give it a little turn. While it's open, I'll add a little bit of salt. What the heck, let's just bring this thing front and center and get the whole darn job done. And what we're gonna add in this to make it a nice, creamy, rich tasting pate is coconut butter. Now you can see my coconut butter is off color a little bit. I store it with, um, I put a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of brag and I just blend it up together and I keep that around as a tub of butter. It just adds a little creamier flavor and um, I think it adds a little more punch, so we keep it around the house so that we have, <laughs> that must be over calling, um, so that we have something yummy to spread on a flax cracker at the last minute if somebody's snacky while we're waiting for dinner, and it tastes really good. It tastes just like butter. Mm. Salty, creamy, and delicious. Let's see if it likes that. It's gonna like this even better, a little moisture in there. Before it does that, I'm just gonna help it out a little bit more. You'll see this nice green color of this pate is really, really pretty. I love this pate topped with some fresh, yummy, red, ripe, juicy tomatoes on some greens. So I'll just throw a bit of greens on everybody's plate who's gonna eat dinner that night. And top it with some pate and then toss it with a circle of beautiful red tomato rings. Oh, it's beautiful. There we go, it's happy now. All right. One more time to make sure we're not chunky anywhere. Can't get a little taste for seasoning. Oh my God, so good. 
Okay. Very garlicky. So for those of you who don't want that much garlic, you probably could have done away with her. You probably could have done fine with two cloves of garlic. Me, I love everything garlic. Luckily, so does my family. All right. Let's get that out of there so you can see what it looks like. We'll just set this over here. And voila, beautiful green yummy pesto pate. You can spread that on crackers, you can put it on the top of a salad like I like to do it. If you're the type of person who likes a lot of foods to go, raw foods to go, you can actually form this into little patties and throw it in the dehydrator and they make delicious burgers, like little basil garlic burger. And you can sandwich that between two flax crackers or even just wrap it in lettuce leaves if you're on the go somewhere. I love having those around too. But when it's not dehydrated, it actually has more moisture in it for you. So it's perfectly fine to eat this way. That's the best thing about raw foods. They actually don't have to go in the dehydrator. You don't have to do any of that stuff. So if it's too time consuming for you or you don't have one, screw it. Just eat it the way that it is. I hope you enjoy this quick, quick recipe of the uh, walnut pesto pate. I know I sure will. And I will see you next time on The Delicious Revolution. Yum.